everyone. Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I have a very special guest with me, the mayor of Jackson, Tennessee, Scott Conger. Mayor, it's an honor to be chatting with you today. Oh, no, the honor is mine. Thanks for having me. Mayor, I'm excited to speak with you because I've been seeing the news and hearing all of the uh, buzz coming out of Jackson, Tennessee of the work you're looking to do as far as your vision for crypto. Uh, but let's start with your background. Where are you from? Where did you grow up? Oh, man, I'm, I'm from Jackson, Tennessee, originally. And so Jackson, uh, for those who don't know, is about you know two hours west of Nashville, Tennessee, and about an hour east of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, and got a population about 68,000. And so uh, you know my family's been here since about 1832. And so wow. uh, we're, we're really invested in Jackson and seeing it prosper and grow. And uh, you know, I got two small kids, my wife and I do. And so that's one of the reasons that I decided to, to run and serve in this office. Uh, was so that we can be a part of a building Jackson that makes them want to stay when they get older. Absolutely. Um, I've still yet to visit Jackson, Tennessee, and would love to uh, sometime soon as things open up. Absolutely. Um, but I wanted to ask, you know, what was your first encounter with Bitcoin or any other crypto? And what was your aha moment? Well, yes, that's that's a great question. So, you know, the pandemic gives us a lot of opportunity to, to look and to study and find things. And, you know, my, my job, especially prior to was uh, a, lot of, a lot of meetings, having to go places after hours and things like that. And so everything's shutting down, kind of, you don't really know you're having Zoom meetings. And so you get some more time to to look at social media and to, to look at different things. And it, it really opened up on Twitter, kind of looking at the conversation on crypto and, um, uh, and, and doing a little, a little more research on it. The, the problem is if you don't know where to look, then you don't know what's noise and what's not and what's the truth. And so sure. um, you know, watching uh, what other people were talking about, people that I knew personally uh, talking about it. And then I started watching uh, you know, Mayor Suarez from a distance yeah. and seeing what he was doing. And my, my first inkling was, you know, that's Miami, you know, Miami's a little different than Jackson. Uh, and so it, I don't know that that can be something that, that we can do here. And, and a friend of mine here locally who's, who's been involved in crypto and, and will be involved in Bitcoin since 2015, uh, kind of jokingly one day tweeted at me uh, from one of Mayor Swaters' tweets. and like, what about Jackson? And so you don't know me. I'm, I'm very sarcastic. I like to joke. Uh, I don't take myself seriously. I take my job seriously. And so I tweeted back about another coin and uh, the Maxis just kind of started piling on. And uh, so what it did, though, it opened up an opportunity for Mayor Suarez and I to, to message. We, we shared it, our numbers with each other and kind of messaged back and forth a little bit. And then so it, that really got me thinking, maybe, maybe we can do something like that in Jackson. Um, and maybe that's an opportunity for us. We have a lot to offer here. Uh, we were the first city in Tennessee with a, with a gig fiber internet infrastructure. Uh, we didn't tell anybody. So another city on the other side of the state can claim it, but we were the first. Uh, and so then the aha moment was, was talking with that friend, Aaron, and he's in the fencing business. And so he was talking about how he got into to Bitcoin and, you know, kind of what he thinks about it and started thinking and said, you know, you really hit you when you start thinking in sats. And so fencing world, um, lumber for, for fiat currency through the roof, uh, 200% inflation and, and cost on that. He said, but if, if I'm looking at it from a dollar aspect, yes, it's way more expensive than it was this time last year. But if I'm looking at it from the perspective of sats, mm. it's actually cheaper than it was this time last year. And so I was just, that was a light bulb moment. It was, you know, this is something that's only going to appreciate. Take all the short-term volatility conversation and, and the the fear and the apprehension of that. Uh, you look at the long-term appreciation and the store of value that it has, right. um, then it just makes sense to look at how we can transition that and, and become a better option at the local level for us, uh, for our citizens, uh, for our employees and businesses. Absolutely. Um, so I have to ask, you know, are you currently holding any Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm holding Bitcoin. Uh, you know, kind of look at some others, but you know, Bitcoin's kind of, you know, for me, it's um, it's it seems to store value. Like I said, 
taking a step back and not looking in the day to week month. I think what we have, we have a tendency to do now, um, especially with this huge drive in crypto, hmm. you know, we're looking at what's the short term drive. How am I going to push it? How am I going to pump it, dump it, get my profits and go, I'm thinking in the dollar mindset, how can I push this crypto to get more dollars? But if you're thinking in long-term asset appreciation and that DCA or dollar cost averaging, then I think Bitcoin just makes the most sense. For sure. Um, so I want to ask about these spe specific initiatives that you have in mind for the city of Jackson. Um, I think I read some of uh, uh, having empl paying employees in Bitcoin, if I'm not mistaken, mining Bitcoin potentially and adding it to the city's uh, balance sheet. Is that correct? Yeah, so not necessarily paying employees yet in, in Bitcoin, but giving them an opportunity to set up much like what we have now with our deferred compensation with their IRA plan. Hmm. We can pay them in U.S. dollars and then um, through you know payroll deduction for them, they can take those dollars and then they can convert it into a crypto wallet They and choose to do that and uh, you know, set it up much like, like they have for the IRA, just create that asset appreciation. Um, and then for us, I, I think right now, because, you know, you, you look at and my job as a mayor is to, to spend tax dollars wisely. Right. Um, I don't think at this point with that short-term volatility that it is a, a selling point to say, hey, I'm gonna take a quarter million of your dollars, citizens, and I'm gonna I'm gonna buy crypto, I'm gonna buy Bitcoin with it. Sure. Their, their, their minds are gonna blow and they'll <laughs> probably be in my office to escort me out. Um, but if we if we can spend, you know, a reasonable amount to get some mining rigs to mine and then utilize our offsetting hours of our, our energy output. So, you know, five o'clock, everyone goes home and then we can turn the miners on and we can have a leveled energy output, which helps our local energy authority plan. Um, you know, we're util utilizing from TVA nuclear hydro energy here in West Tennessee. And so it's not necessarily a, a dirty burn. Um, sure. And uh, we can we can do that as well. And also we have a, a closed um, landfill it has methane burn off. If we can at some point trap that in some generators and use that as well. Uh, the, the hurdle that we got to get across in Tennessee is allowing government to hold cryptocurrency Bitcoin on the balance sheet. And so I talked with our control, state comptroller's office last week and there's just no legislation yet. Uh, there's no statute at the state level that allows us to do that. It's very specific on what we can hold in our investments what we can have on our balance sheet and uh, Bitcoin's not there yet. And so having some conversations with, with others about um, gathering some legislation to get that changed in our next legislative session, which will start in January of next year. So uh, we got some time to prepare. Um, and what we're doing here at our local level is getting, getting together. Um, we call it a blockchain task force um, and people that are experienced in that and have a knowledge so we can talk about more initiatives. If it's education, for our just general public, for our employees, for businesses, how they can enter into that world and that uh, that ecosystem and economy with ease, um, you know, reducing some of the fear and the anxiety and the apprehension, and uh, providing those opportunities. And so, I'm I'm a firm believer in getting people much smarter than me around the table, which is right. not not a hard feat to do. I can find people smarter than me everywhere I go. So, uh, you know, get those people around the table and and come up with some ideas on how we can do that. Absolutely. And you may not be able to answer this question because I know you're still in progress on some of these initiatives. Did you have in mind uh, if there was like a custodian that you would use to store your Bitcoin or anything like that, or is it still too early? Yeah, I think that's early. And for us, it would be much like we do our, our deferred compensation. So we would, that was what the group was going to help out with of crafting that, that request for proposal. And so we would take the proposals and then uh, we would, whoever we would contract with would have to go before our city council uh, to be able to do that, to allow our employees to, to make that decision. Absolutely. Um, I did want to ask, and uh, I don't know if this is on the table yet or it's in the works. Um, are you offering any incentives to, let's say, crypto companies um, where maybe any tax deferred items or whatever it may be? Anything along those lines? I don't think anything is off the table. So I don't you know if you know about Tennessee, we are... We are very friendly to business. Um, you know, you look at just our residential property tax rates. It's a dollar ninety six per hundred hundred dollar valuation on a property. 
um, that's for the city taxes, county taxes are 233. Um, so our, our wastewater, uh, you know, sewer, electricity, gas is all run by the local energy authority. And so we can keep rates very low uh, compared to, to other areas. And so we, we are, um, we're very friendly to business where it's, you know, cost of a house I posted last night, average cost of a house in Jackson right now in this inflated market is $304,000 wow. at $110 per square foot. So um, you get a lot of house uh, comparatively for what you could across the country. So I want to ask about U.S. crypto regulations. You know, you mentioned that there's no regulatory clarity about can you hold Bitcoin and crypto assets on your balance sheet? And there seems to be a larger conversation happening. Some folks in Congress were waiting on the SEC for a Bitcoin ETF and some other things that they're doing. You know, what are your thoughts overall? And maybe if you're hearing certain conversations happening or you can take us behind the curtain a little bit if possible. Well, if, if we're going behind the curtain, we're all going together because I haven't heard much. <laughs> uh, but I think as far as, as adoption goes for, for governmental entities, you know, most things that we all we wait on is is federal level guidance down. And I, I just don't think that that's going to be the case here with with Bitcoin adoption and cryptocurrency. I think it's going to have to start. You know, we've seen it start in, in you call it grassroots, I guess. But you've seen it start with individuals and people getting involved. And you see those like kind of societies come up, I guess. Um, but I really think that the true adoption and and the regulatory aspect is going to have to be ground up what works at the local level and how that can transition and transfer to the state and the federal level on what works because it's you know something in our lifetime that, that we've never seen of, of a new currency that can be utilized that has a great store of value that has so much opportunity that it does um i, I just don't i think it's being so massive already mm -hmm. that i don't think that the federal government can can take it in and push it, push those regulatory measures down. It's going to have to come up from the bottom up. Interesting, yeah. And, and to your point, like we're just seeing a lot of states kind of doing their own thing. Wyoming, Nebraska. Um, I'm sure maybe you're talking to the other mayors and governor and so forth of Tennessee to try to see what Tennessee as a whole can do. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll we'll see how all these states if they can collectively come together with something and and we get regulatory clarity soon. Uh, I think so. I think it'll be it'll be state by state on what you see. And then as you see some more, probably get to that, you know, whatever the tipping point may be, it may be 30 states is the tipping point where the, the federal government says, OK, we have enough now that we can look at some some national uh, regulatory measures that make sense. So we have enough states that adopted it at their level. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I want to ask about some breaking news we had this morning from uh, Elon Musk tweeting that Tesla was pausing the payments via Bitcoin, but they're still holding Bitcoin in their balance sheet. And Elon, for what, as far as we know, is still holding Bitcoin personally. What are your thoughts on that? And and look, at this point, it's yeah. nobody knows what is going on in Elon's mind, but we can speculate a little bit. Well, you know, I can say this. He's not a dumb guy. Um, there is a reason for every tweet that he sends out. There is a plan behind it, right? Um, my personal belief is we're, we're facing the same thing. We have several police cars that we have on hold that we're, we've ordered because of microchips, uh, that they, they can't get those microchips. And I'm sure that Tesla is, is having the same issue um, and he needs inventory to go out. And so um, I think that's just, that may be part of it. He may be... You know, they're in thought in my mind this afternoon. There may be just crazy idea that he's going to get all the people that aren't serious about it out by saying that. And then I, I don't know. I, I think there's a reason to it. Um, you know, he's he's obviously he, he's thinking about Mars and we're all still here on Earth. Yeah. I mean, right. So um, he has a reason behind it. He's he's probably thinking two or three steps ahead as it is now. But uh, I think we'll we'll see as it comes out what the reason was and. I don't think he's trying to to tank Bitcoin. Maybe he's just trying to prove the uh, the resilience of it. That may be simply the maybe simple reason. I did this. It went only it only went down this much, and it came back. It's resilient. There, there's your proof of concept right there. Sure. I, I we've seen him talk about testing li the liquidity of Bitcoin mm -hmm. by Tesla selling off a small share of what they own. Um, some people were thinking 
look, this could be a marketing uh, plan here because Tesla has a renewable energy solution for mining. Maybe they're building some sort of rig that's energy efficient. Who knows? But yeah, that could be part of it. I think there's a lot of options that could happen. <laughs> I don't think he's doing it just to just to do it. For sure. Um, so I w- want to get your thoughts on some other things within the crypto sphere here. Um, I don't know how much you know about it, but like NFTs, uh, non-fungible tokens or CBDCs, the central bank digital currencies, any thoughts on any of those things? And, and, and if, I had a conversation with someone about NFTs a couple of days ago. That blew my mind still. I, I just, <laughs> yeah. you know, I think it's kind of the way people look at Bitcoin. I can't hold it. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's a, and so... <laughs> It, there's a lot for me to learn on that. I'm not, you know, I, I don't pass judgment on something I don't understand. Uh, so I'm still, I'm still driving and dropping down the rabbit hole of, of Bitcoin and crypto. So it's, uh, I'm trying to absorb as much information as I can and, and understand it. And I think that, uh, you know, there's, you know, my, my wife and I talk about, you know, having videos, you know, when, you know, I'm 38, about to be 38. And so growing up, you know, dad had the camcorder out you know on the shoulder camcorder and you have two hour videos from these vhs's i mean you know the average video now that we take is what 30 seconds two minutes maybe and so my wife found this camcorder and she's like i want our kids to have you know these videos like we had well think about it no one has those videos now we all take those one to two minute videos that's just the way that we've progressed and how we capture memories our kids also have thousands of more pictures on our external hard drive in our house. You know, we had Polaroids and, and printed pictures that, you know, nowhere near the amount of pictures our kids had. So the idea of, of all of that is transitioning and shifting, I think is, you know, probably a next logical step. I don't understand it yet. Hopefully I'll, I will at some point, but uh, you know, my kids probably go, I can't, dad, I can't at some point, but I can't never believe you didn't know what NFT was. Like, yeah. You know, they're, they're three and five, so they may get it next year. For sure. Yeah. And, and it's the digital age that we are in and it's growing and everything is becoming digitized and, and now the tokenization of assets. I mean, it's still even myself, I guess I would consider myself a millennial. I'm 38 as well, but um yeah, it's still hard to grasp at certain times, like putting artwork on the, the blockchain and it's like, mm-hmm. mm, but what if I want it in my safe and it's on my wall or something? Yeah, it's, it's and, and technology now is moving so fast um, that it's just, you know, almost it's, you can consume yourself with trying to keep up with how technology is moving. Um, and it's, um, I mean, we're, we live in very interesting times and very exciting times. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, last question I want to ask you here, and it's along the lines of using crypto technology, which is blockchain, because we're seeing blockchain being adopted by many different industries, even the government looking at the, the U.S. Postal Service, uh, possibly voting. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? And eventually, because everything is on a blockchain is secure, the verification and limiting uh, voter fraud and all kinds of other things like that. You know, what are your thoughts in, in the next layer that we're going to it's going to be built on the blockchain? I think, I think the possibilities really are endless. I think the, the, um, the roadblock and the hurdle is going to be people's apprehension about it because, you know, you hear this, the manipulation is, you know, almost undoable. It's unbreakable. You know, it's hard to hack. And we just, we're sitting here now with, um, with the colonial pipeline that's been hacked. And so, um, even though we're so far into the digital age, from where we were, gosh, you know, 20 years ago, uh, I think that that's placing for a lot of people, their faith totally in technology of something that you can't hold, that you can't do is, is going to be a roadblock for, for a lot of people. And, and we have to get through that. I think that's where, even when it comes to, to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, that education of what it is, how it's done, how it's held, um, you know, that's going to have to be, and there's still going to be, you know, with everything, those who go, we well, you know what, I can't hold it. I can't see it. It doesn't exist. Um, and so I think there's, that's going to be the roadblock is, is that, that human element is going to have to be the roadblock probably. Yeah. And, and I'm sure it's going to take possibly a generational shift. Um, you know, like you say, mm-hmm. your kids and uh, eventually they won't think about it and, and it will be second nature, but it's going to take time to get there and it will be special. Um, well, Mayor, I want to wrap it up here with some quick rapid uh, fire questions, such as what's your favorite food? 
every food guys I probably I mean, I live with a three and a five year old, right? So I'd probably say pizza. It's, it's, it's our, it's our thing. <laughs> sure. For sure. I have a three year old. So I totally uh, relate to that. Uh, favorite musician or band. Oh gosh. That's uh, it, it depends on my mood. Uh, I came home the other day. My, my wife was playing nineties hits. And I was like, I was, I was back home. Right. You know? So uh, yeah, I, I, it depends on the genre of music and, and the mood it is. I, I like all kinds of music. Awesome. Uh, favorite movie might be a similar answer. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna have to go with Tombstone. Is my favorite movie. Yeah. Yeah. You know, look, when it comes on on TV, I gotta watch it. I mean, it's it's pretty. Oh, good. It, I've I've purchased it on Prime, so it's there in my queue. I can I can pull it up anytime. Yeah. I, um, uh, Val Kilmer is Doc Holliday. Is just that's, the, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, favorite book. <sighs> Man, that's. Um. Gosh, I don't know what my favorite book That's is. A tough one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a tough one. Yeah, it's a tough one. You know, I'm not a big fiction fan. Uh, I like nonfiction. Uh, probably my favorite, two favorite authors, probably Simon Sinek and Malcolm Gladwell. I like both. I, I like everything that they've written. Um, the, probably the my, my two favorite authors. Instead, of, I don't have a favorite book because I, I like all of them that they write. Awesome. And finally, uh, when you're not doing your mayoral duties, you know, what are you doing for fun as a hobby? chasing a three and a five year old around. Um, and, uh, you know, it's hobbies have been interesting, especially this past year, because you don't, don't do hobbies around people anymore. And so trying to get back in and reacclimated to the world. Uh, but, um, you know, I took office in July of 2019. And when I ran, uh, started running with a, a six month old and a two year old at that time. And so, <laughs> I told folks, you know, if you're looking for someone who's going to be at all the nighttime events, all the social events, everything after hours, then I'm not your guy. You're not your guy. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to see my kids grow up. I'm going to be with my wife and my family. And uh, so that's probably my favorite hobby is just spending time with them because I miss so much. Uh, my wife stays at home and, and teaches our kids every day. And um, she gets to see kind of the milestones happen. And, um, you know, if I'm coming home six, seven o'clock at night, I'm missing so much. So I get those weekends. I try not to schedule that and just, be with them and, and be a part of their life and see them grow. And, um, you know, they're teaching me stuff now. They're just, uh, I think they're probably smarter than me already. And so <laughs> it's just the, the being a dad and being a husband. For sure. Well, Mayor, um, you know, I appreciate you being forward thinking and, and uh, embracing the technology that's the future here. And I'm looking forward to seeing the updates from Jackson, Tennessee, as things progress with your blockchain task force and things along those lines. So, but thank you so much for, for speaking with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing those things come to fruition as well.